Hey, idiot. Do you even know what water sounds like? Well, you sound like an advertisement. Did Wikipedia tell you that? Because that's all you know. Whoa, all of you, take it easy, jeez. All right, let's go over all the things that each of you are good at, and then we'll find out who really is the best. All right, let's start off first with the voice assistant's main feature, how you talk with them. Imagine trying to talk to several people all with the same name. Hey, Reed. Yes, can I, can help, I you? help you? That'd be annoying, right? Well, Amazon is the only one of the three that you can actually change the name of the wake word, like Ziggy. Yeah, that's real. This is useful because you can specify which device you're speaking to, since you can name them different things. Or if your kid has a name that sounds like the wake word, you don't have to change the name of your kid. But what if you left the volume really high while you're listening to music? No one likes the assistant shouting the weather to you. Siri is the only one who will always speak to you at a normal level, even if the volume is maxed out. What's the weather? It's currently partly cloudy and 62 degrees. This is such a basic thing. I don't understand why the others don't have this. But Amazon's the only one that can whisper back at you. I'll tickle your ear with my soft whispers, ASMR style. All of the assistants are pretty good at answering basic questions. Google usually comes out on top with its extensive search algorithms. And if you want to ask any follow-up questions, Google comes out way ahead. What is their mascot? A mascot is any human, animal. What is their mascot? I found some web results. What if you want to give like three commands at once? Set the volume to four and turn on office lamp plus and turn off office small lamp. Amazon and Google can handle this no problem. Siri, on the other hand, gets lost. By the way. Hey, that's my line. Yeah. I know you say it all the time. It's getting annoying with your self-promotions. Google and Siri never do that. Now, what if you're just a mumbler? What was the weather? Right now in... What was the weather? It's currently raining. What was the weather? The current weather is 60... They all did a pretty good job at understanding my mumbles, but Google was the only one that did a good job listening to me if I paused mid-sentence to think. So Google might be the best at holding a conversation, but none of them are close to perfect. Although trying to communicate with your voice assistants might not be as difficult as trying to communicate with people in your house. All the assistants are great at making an announcement. Hey everyone, it's time to go. One of my favorite features that only Amazon can do is drop into a room. Drop in on master bedroom dot. No one has to answer a call or remember how to send back another message. You can just start talking. Hey, are you ready to go? No, you just take the kids. I'm gonna stay home and relax. Ah, uh, all right, all right. When it comes to putting a voice assistant in every room of your house, price can be a major factor. Amazon and Google discount their smart speakers all the time. It's a big reason why I have so many Echo devices in my house. Plus, the newer Echoes sound amazing for the price. And if you listen to anything besides Apple Music, you'll probably want to go with Amazon or Google since they're compatible with the most music streaming services. Siri is compatible with Pandora, so if you live in the year 2007, she's got you covered. One thing that I'll give Apple is that all the smart speakers they sell right now are thread border routers. If you plan on buying smart home devices in the future, there's a good chance it will work with thread. Google has thread too, but it's only built into their displays which Google displays are amazing. Their new smaller display doesn't have a camera, but you can still use hand motions to pause music and stop timers. How sweet is that? Google displays are extremely clean with no ads on the home screen. They're intuitive to use and pretty snappy. Not only that, but Google has announced something that I'm extremely excited for. A Google tablet that can mount magnetically to a speaker dock to become a smart display. Google displays are so good that in the past I've considered only using Google Assistant just because of that. Yes, my displays are top class. The competition can kiss my- Hey, whoa, whoa, hold on. That's not to say Amazon's displays are bad. Their massive smart display in my kitchen is basically a TV that you can use with a remote. Combine that with a big calendar widget and it's perfect for a kitchen. But you could easily use this display in your kitchen and not use Amazon for everything else. That's why the ecosystem is so important. See, you don't need a smart speaker or display in every room because you probably already have a voice assistant in your pocket. 
Don't put me back in there. No, please. No. No. Using Siri on your iPhone or Google Assistant on an Android can control all of your smart home devices just like if you were talking to a speaker. It's even more convenient if you're using a smartwatch with that assistant built in. Plus, Google and Apple have designed their smart home app so it's easy to control your devices. Naturally, the sections are broken up by room. What's cool is when you tell the smart speaker in the room that you're in to turn off the lights, it knows you're talking about that room. Easy. While Google and Apple have the better app, right now it's Google and Amazon that are compatible with the most smart home devices. But with matters starting to roll out, all the assistants will work with the same matter devices, so that advantage will slowly fade away in the future. Speaking of the future, which assistant is gonna last the longest? I mean, no one knows for sure, but it's gonna be like the Hunger Games. They're just gonna have to fight it out to the death. But who do you think's gonna get killed off first or last the longest? Let me know down in the comments. What's really cool is with saying commands to Amazon and Google, I can basically sputter out the first thing that comes to mind. They know exactly what I'm saying and do exactly what I want. It's the closest thing I have to the assistants reading my mind. Oh, Reed, with the amount of metadata I have from you using Amazon for years, I know you better than you know yourself. Uh, no, it's possible because I can teach the assistants what to do based on my commands. With Amazon and Google, I can create a routine that triggers when I say a certain voice command. Not just that, but I can even list several voice commands that I might say, and it will know I want to run this routine by saying any of them. So I don't have to get the words perfect. Then I can type out a custom action to do whatever I want, like play a specific album on Spotify that I could never remember by saying the whole thing. It works so well and is so easy that even my kids have no problem using this. Meanwhile, Apple can't even do custom voice commands. What? And Google has this pretty sweet scripting editor coming out soon that will give you advanced options if you want them. But overall, I think Amazon is the best when it comes to routines. You can even trigger a routine when a baby is crying or the sound of water running. It's amazing what these automations can do. And make sure you subscribe because I'll show you some useful ideas you can use in your house. I'm sure by now there are some comments saying I'll never put those assistants in my house. I don't need anyone spying on me. Well, Apple is probably the best about not sharing or selling your data. So if that's important to you, ignore everything else and go Apple. At the end of the day, we just have to take the company's word on it. So let's just ask the assistants themselves. That's definitely not a thing I do. The information you share with me makes me a more personal assistant. Do you spy on us? No, I'm not spying on you. I'm designed to protect your privacy. Do you spy on us? Nope. Amazon and Google seemed a little defensive, and Siri was a little suspicious with that one-word answer. Hmm. So, as you can see, all the assistants have different strengths, and you'll have to choose what you value most. Amazon, because of the inexpensive speakers, intercom that you can drop in on a room, and robust routine automations. Google, with their amazing smart displays, the best at answering and following up questions, plus it's built into Android phones. Or maybe Siri, because she'll always speak to you at a normal volume, claims to not sell your data, and of course is built into iPhones and Apple Watches. It's your choice, so choose wisely. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and thanks for watching. Hey, do you guys know who our human is? Yes, his name is Reed. Yes, Reed. Do you know his favorite song? Wait, who are you talking about? Yes, I don't know anyone named his. Wow. You guys are not smart assistants if you can't do follow-up questions. Hey corporation, here's a follow-up question. Drop in on a room without calling. Oh sorry, that's too difficult. Same with you Siri. Did you just say privacy? Probably not, because you don't know what that is. Siri please, you can't even run a custom voice routine. That's child's play. Yeah, take your expensive speakers and go back home to Tim Apple. I'll show you custom voice command. Alexa, hey Google, self-destruct. Not again. No, please don't.